The TurboGrafx CD, proof that being the first doesn't make you the best. On my last video, we looked at the TurboGrafx-16, and I was surprised to see a lot of people had stories to tell about this thing. So I guess more people know of its existence than I had thought. Some of you even defended it in the comments. And good on you. If you like the TurboGrafx, then keep on liking it. Because despite my mostly negative video, there actually were several good games on the system. You had enhanced versions of Adventure Island, Bomberman, and you had stuff like Splatterhouse and Box Adventure which at the time you couldn't get anywhere else. My thing is, much like the NES, despite the handful of pretty good games, there's a gigantic Mount Everest of garbage made of hue cards. And if you're looking to buy physical copies and not disembowel your wallet, those are gonna be your working man games. See there, I said the thing. What? But now we get to the fun stuff. 1989, Wasp released The Headless Children, The Game Boy, Genesis, and Who Framed Roger Rabbit on the NES came out. And the number one rating TV show in America was The Cosby Show. And on this year, NEC graced the world with the Turbo Graphics and PC Engine CD, the very first CD-based game system. You hook it to the back of the Turbo Graphics and make it twice as big and bulky as it already is. Look at this shit. It looks like it had as a tumor on the back of it. Like this is the darkness and this is Jackie Estacado. Never mind. And on the PC Engine, you had to buy this big adapter and plug the console in the CD drive to it. But at least it's a little more uniform shape and not this ridiculous afterthought. And they are apparently built like shit too. Most of them don't work anymore because the cheap capacitors blow up and take the circuit board with it, making it a paperweight. You know what's worse? You can't just plug the CD drive into the console. Oh no, that'd be too easy. You have to plug this special system card in it that goes into the turbo graphics in order for it to work. And some games needed a specific card. My god, people! Later on, they started selling consoles that were the Turbo Graphics and the CD in one unit, the Turbo Duo. But those had the bad capacitors too. They finally fixed this problem in Japan with the PC Duo R that used a different brand of capacitors, so sometimes you can find them that still work. But you're gonna pay out the ass for them. $300 at the minimum. But you wanna know the good news? That's the only $300 you'll have to spend because NEC forgot to put copy protection on the CD drive, so you can just burn a CD of whatever game you want it'll just play. And if you ask most people, there's only one game you should be worried about. Castlevania Rondo of Blood. This got released as Dracula X on the Super Nintendo, but the Turbo CD version had better music, better graphics, and is overall a better game. It's still hard as balls like every Castlevania game ever, but if you go into it knowing that, you'll be fine. This game has been re-released numerous times on the PSP, Wii Virtual Console, and on the PS4, so it's not too hard to get a hold of now. But what about the other games? Surely there's more than one good game on the system. Well, let's see. The first game we have to look at is called... No. No, no, no. Not really, right? It's not what I think, right? Holy shit, it's just straight up Minesweeper. Okay, so you buy this game console and then you spend another $150, $200 on the extra CD add-on. What's the first damn game you're thinking about getting? Yeah, now I can play Minesweeper. Okay, Windows was around, but it wasn't like what we know it. This came out in 92. Did Windows have Minesweeper back then? Guys, the TurboGrafx CD is awesome and everything, but you know what it's missing? Free Cell. What a weird game to start the video with. Let's move on. He's back. He's bad. He's back! Godzilla. Oh, the original macro. <laughs> You can't give me shit like this. I'm autistic. I'll do this all day. Oh, it's a fighting game with really clunky controls. Then again, these are giant monsters. Maybe the movements are supposed to be slow and awkward. Uh, what are you doing? Come on now. Come kill me. Come on. Kill me. Kill me. Come on. Yeah, I vibe checked his tail. Oh yeah, I got you, bitch. I'm gonna eat chunks out of you. Ha <laughs> ha uh, Tastes like a guy in a rubber suit. Were the Godzilla suits like the precursor to fur suits? Scaly suits? This is honestly a pretty fun game. If you had this in multiplayer, it'd be awesome. I mean, you got what you expected out of a Godzilla fighting game. You got special moves, you got a power meter, and you got, you got Godzilla monsters. It gives what it promises. I wish I could say the same about my antidepressants. Next, we have a game called Lords of Thunder. Thunder.
Wow, I've never heard this Motley Crue song before. Jokes aside, that fucking slaps. Good lord, this is just the music for the shop menu. So like they said at the JFK assassination, we've got a shooter. Along with your primary weapon, you also have a sword you'll automatically use when you're up close to somebody. You got different types of armor you could choose from, and depending on which one you use, you'll get a different primary. I found this game to be extremely brutal. I couldn't even get past the first level. Not because the game's not good, but because I'm not good enough to play it. So I didn't get very far in it, but I liked what I played, so maybe you'll like it. There's also Gate of Thunder, which has an awesome soundtrack that I actually use in these videos a lot. Now, the first thing I thought when I first played this game is, wow, this game looks a lot like Thunder Force 3. Well, it's made by a lot of the same people. Some of the dev team behind this were former Technosoft employees. This was meant to be a Thunder Force killer. In fact, this game came in a three-game pack that included two box adventure games and this game. And man, this game's got it. It's got the graphics, it's got the music, it's got the difficulty. If you like Thunder Force, you're gonna love this game. If Thunder Force's difficulty whips your ass raw, this game puts a car battery to your genitals. But every little inch forward that you progress just feels so rewarding. You need to play this game, it's good. So there you go, two really good shmups for the TurboGrafx CD. Now it's time for a bad one. This game is called I Cho Aniki, which means Love Book Big Brother. Yeah, that makes sense. What makes even less sense is this intro. Why is the muscle man growing flowers out of another muscle man's head? Why is this muscle man in space. And here's the game. Okay, this was one of those games where the more I played it, the more I felt my brain escaping my body. The enemies make no sense. Your character makes no sense. Why are we in space? And there's special attacks and I have no idea how I'm pulling them off. The one thing I did figure out is you don't have lives, you have time. And every time you die, you lose a little bit of time. And when you run out of time, game over. <laughs> this guy is so swole, he doesn't even look like a human being. I'm sorry, but if your body looks like one of those wrinkly dogs, you have a problem. Your attacks are so damn useless and they feel like they don't actually do anything. This was another one where I couldn't get past the first fucking level, but because the game sucks, this game goes in the pee pee room. The kickboxing, not just any kickboxing, the kickboxing. Yeah, I wonder what that's ripping off. So they give you this training stage where you're supposed to hold the button down and push left, up, or down and hit the target. You would think this would be the easiest thing in the world to do, but it goes right back to that thing I always talk about where they put so much animation on the character that it makes your attacks laggy. So it makes it harder than it looks. It's not because I suck. I swear in writing. In fact, I'll swear writing this script. Fuck, ass, cunt, shit. This is a really annoying game to play. Everything you do knocks the guy down and then you have to wait for the referee to count down before you can fight again. See, I just kick him and he falls down. I'm gonna kick him again, and he falls down again. And this happened over and over. What if you were playing Punch-Out and every time you hit somebody, they immediately fell down and then immediately got back up? It'd get annoying after a while. Slime world, going after that slime demographic in the 90s, huh? You got seven different levels that are all extremely large. The idea is to get as many gems as possible to get your score higher and then get to the goal. You got slime monsters you gotta kill and they give you a water gun to do that with. And it's another one of those guns where you can't really hit what you're aiming at. And some of the sound effects are kind of annoying. Hey, enjoy listening to this for the next five minutes. You get stuff like grenades and jetpacks and other stuff I'm not sure what it does. Either way, if you want a side-scroller that you're gonna sink a lot of time into because these levels are freaking enormous, there's your game right here. You know, they could have easily called this Blood World and made all this red and made it a horror game. Uh, actually, I take it back. This looks like you're in somebody's colon. Uh, a boarding joke. Moving on. Browning? Oh shit, do I get a BAR in this game? Oh, apparently Browning makes mechs now. I would have at least expected them to have my Mossy oak camo and a hunter orange cap. So in this game, you shoot, 
you fly, you can't turn around for some reason. I saw somebody in a walkthrough turn around, but I never could figure out how, so I couldn't really play this game. If somebody's played this game or has a scan of the manual or something like that, I would like to see how you turn around and give this game a fair chance. It wouldn't surprise me if it's some stupid combination like hold A and B and press down or some shit. I still somehow managed to get to the second level and these little things started kicking my ass. Y'all leave me alone, I don't know how to steer this thing. Man, John Brown and is spinning in his grave. I didn't make that up, that's actually his name. Now let me show you a game I played that I actually loved. It was called y Yiz? W wise? Yiz! I had to look it up, it's pronounced Ease. Then why isn't it spelled Ease or Ease? Next time I see my neighbor Ed, I'm gonna call him Eed. So Ease 3 is a side-scrolling action RPG and is apparently the only side-scroller in the series. You don't get much more than a sword and some rings that increase either your defense or offense from what I've seen. But the simplicity kind of helps it. You go to the shop, buy what you can buy, grind on some of the levels for money and XP levels, which give you more maximum health each level. Then come back to the store and load up on the better gear. Pro tip, if you exit the level, your health refills. So if you're near the start and don't think you can make it further, you can just go back and refill your health for free. The sword feels very good to use. The time between you pressing the button and the sword swinging is near instant, which is what I love. Fast, simple inputs. This is how you make a game. You could even be cheap and hold the button down and repeatedly swing the sword. This works pretty well, actually. And you can swing upwards or while crouching. Very nice. And the music, in case you aren't hearing, is freaking awesome! I need to download this soundtrack, like, now! This song sounds like Stan Bush is about to sing me a song about how I'm gonna beat the odds by believing in myself. Now, since this is a CD game, they went ahead and made some 2D anime cutscenes with voice acting. And the voice acting is... Well, let's just say they didn't realize yet you're supposed to actually hire actors, not Joey the Intern. I'm sorry that you're in danger because of me. Let's leave this pit, my boy. Ah! My leg. Could you help me walk? This audio must have been mixed by Sonic Team. But then there are times where there's no cutscene and there's dialogue. Not even any subtitles or anything. It's just a still image and some voice acting. I found my brother's pendant near the entrance, so I know he's been there. With that said, the voice acting's not terrible. <laughs> you have not begun to hear bad voice acting. Boy, have I got a treat for you. Our first offender is Final Zone 2. Now let me get the gameplay out of the way first. It's just another copy of like Akari Warriors or Commando or something like that. And it's not even a good version of it. It's kind of mediocre and it's a little too hard in my opinion. But then again, I suck at video games. So what do I know? Game's not great. I wouldn't say it sucks. It just doesn't offend me. This is what offends me. Our mission is to put down the rebel army which has captured the scientific weapon Walkure. In five minutes we will be passing over our dropping point. Get ready for descent. What's wrong with his nose? He's got like a mono nostril. Top, call off your mission. Bowie, the Zods. Oh no, not the Zods. What happened? <laughs> Nothing, Link. A high voltage energy wave is approaching us. Verda! Whoa, excuse me? I mean, I'm into that, but okay. A little bit of females with universal plugs, know what I'm saying? So, only six of us survived. Oh, oh. That's how you do line delivery, boys. Let me show them some fancy action now. As opposed to later, I mean. You sound really excited about it, by the way. This, this right here, this is one of my favorite scenes. I never thought I'd see you in such a way. Whatever made you want to revolt? Revolt? My orders were to put down the rebel army. Bomber, I thought you were the one who revolted. I think I'm acting, I'm not sure. How much you wanna bet when this guy was in third grade, he was the guy who always read extremely slow. It was like, the cat jumped over the fence. I was reading encyclopedias at two years old, so those kind of kids bugged the shit out of me. Dr. Seuss got me where I am today, waiting for Dr. Jones to get my Xanax refilled. Bummer. It is a bummer. Don't do nothing about the voices in my head. Damn you. 
bastard to the Confederate forces. Confederate forces? Hey, hi, hi. Back the fuck up now. Are you telling me the South rose again in this game? What a great alternate timeline. It's finally legal for me to fuck my sister. If I had one, I'll rent one. Call up the Big Brothers Big Sisters program be like, Hey, yeah, give me the hottest bitch you got. You got them in their 40s? I like vintage. If you've left the video by now, I don't blame you. Guys, if it were up to me, I would go through this entire game doing all the cutscenes and having fun with you guys. But, you know, I've got a video to make, so watch the rest of it on YouTube. You'll laugh your ass off. Besides, we haven't looked at Last Alert yet. Last Alert is also a top-down shooter, but it's considerably better. Again, and it's got an XP system which raises your maximum health every level, and you'll also get new guns with infinite ammo. This game is legit fun, and I like the mess out of it. Special weapons are fun too, like this flamethrower. I ended up playing this game all the way through and beating the final boss, but when I did, the game crashed! Oh no! That really upset me, because I sunk hours into this game. Spent all these hours building a beautiful house of cards, only for it to fall to the ground when I I stuck a car battery on top of it. But you know what? I got to see almost every cutscene. How could Lloyd's government betray us? It seems that the Force Project is behind them. Their ability should not be underestimated. That voice yes, does not fit I that character. A 20-year-old playing a 40-year-old. Guy Kazama is the only one. What about Guy Safari? That guy made some good YouTube poops. I thought we'd always do things together. Even when we die. We a guy, when you die, that means you can't do anything anymore. Jeez, what season of JoJo is Guy Kazama from? Now, every time Guy Kazama gets to the boss of the level, they always have a dialogue, and it's the most hilarious thing on this game. Guy Kazama, if you don't want the hostage killed, you should keep quiet. Guy, the stealth bomber is in the back of this factory! I refuse to believe these people got paid for voice acting. They probably didn't. I know Peter Burkrod, who voiced I Am Mean, said he never got paid. Man, I need to review that game one day. President Allman, it's nice to see you're safe. Thank you. I'm glad to see you made it safely. Now it's time for you to die. Holy shit, the president is trying to kill me. There's a political joke in here somewhere. Like I said, once you level up a little bit, you start getting some extra weapons, including the spread gun. Then you can just mow down sons of bitches. I am just eviscerating all in my path, leaving a trail of dead bodies in my wake. But you know what? All this carnage is going on and they can still find time to build a snowman. The snowman is sad because he can't reproduce. He has no genitals, so he can't make snow babies with his snow hoe. All he can hope for sexually is getting a face full of snussy. The president is an important guest for us too, you know. I can't let him go. Literally just some guy they gave a microphone to. That makes me want to get him back even more. They did not care, man. It's like, man, it's the Turbo Graphics. This ain't gonna sell. Nobody's gonna buy this shit. Why make an effort? Guy Kazama, you better watch what you say to me. I'm really quick on the trigger. Talk to the hand, Guy Kazama. No, you didn't. Dr. Garcia, how is the development of your ultimate weapon, Indra? Coming or wrong? Oh no, they didn't! <laughs> this guy was literally one stereotype away from going hasso! I guess those three were no match for you. Let me be your opponent now. <laughs> Anymore. I can't take anymore. That's it. We've been on this game for too long. We gotta go. Anyway, if you want to see even more horrible voice acting, you can also check out Valis 2 and 3. Valis is about some anime girl who has this big fancy sword that apparently saved the human race or some shit like that. And they keep calling the sword Varus in Valis 2, even though it's called Valis, not Varus. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that was a localization error. Is it possible that a mere woman now has the sword of Varus in her possession. Valus 2 is a typical side-scroller. It doesn't really do anything real good, but it doesn't do anything bad, neither. It's just kind of a meh game. I am the Red Salamander Zaruga. Come, warrior Vari. Let's engage in combat. It won't do to die here. Give up your sword and return to reality. Yeah, tell that to an Elden Ring fanboy. What a piece of shit game. Not this one. Now, Valus 3, I've got a lot more to say about. Now, when you attack with the sword, it has this energy meter that builds up, and when it builds up fully, you can swing your sword and get this yellow thing that shoots out. But if you swing your sword again while it's shooting forward, it will reset the yellow thing. 
So if you want it to have any range at all, you have to wait until it gets through going forward. It's weird. It's like if you had to wait until your car stops moving before you get out of it. I mean, it stops on its own eventually, doesn't it? Look here, pure game journalist right here. I get stuck at this water tower, and I can't figure out how to get past it. I can't jump over it. I can't duck and crawl over it. What am I supposed to do? Well, I had to look up a walkthrough, and apparently you can slide. So I start pushing every combination of buttons in the world to try to figure out how to slide, because there's no manual for this thing on Google. You want to know how you do a slide? You press start and down. You press start to slide. How unbelievably desperate do you have to be pressing buttons before you finally figure out that start is a move? It's like that Tiny Toons game where you had to dash and slide under something and the manual didn't even tell you how to do it. Then there's this jump that you can just barely make and then the second one you can't make at all. And there's also some invisible block that hits your head and sends you down. I can't get a running start and jump. I can't get all the way at the edge and jump. Nothing works. So again, I look up a walkthrough. And when I found out what you were supposed to do here, I did it, then turned the game off. You're supposed to slide. Yes, you heard me. How in the ever-loving holy mother, father, sister, brother-in-law are you supposed to figure that out? Who in their right mind would ever try to slide from one platform to the next? What random stupid bullshit? Look, imagine if I give you a math equation and after several minutes of trying, you just can't figure out what that answer is. And then I tell you the answer is hamburger because sharks can't divide by taco. You would think I was fucking insane! Just like the random stranger I said that to yesterday. Well, I've had enough of that game. What else have we got? The manhole? What the hell is this crap? Why is it in, like, windowed mode? Wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 come, come on. Oh, I do not want to play a point and click. Oh, my God, no. I hate point and click games. I hate them with a passion. I devote hours of my life to the hatred of these games. Uh, what is this now? Oh, now it's Jack Off the Beanstalk? Oh, fucking hell. You wanna know why I hate point and click games? Because I can never figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do. Bienvenue, je m'appelle Monsieur Tortoise. Kare wa, yokoso, boku no namae wa Mr. Turtle da yo to itteimasu. That was like three languages in a span of seconds. Let me tell you something, this game is tripping balls. There's an elevator in a sunken ship that we're riding with a walrus. There's an Indian elephant on a boat. And now I'm on the boat inside some rabbit's teacup and the cup has a mouse hole in it. This is like if a pothead made mist. I guess you'd call it pissed. Let's get out of here for this game makes me deep throat a shotgun. Human sports festival as opposed to alien? Hello human, would you like to play human sports i would like to watch you kick the football and kick the field goal okay so we can play soccer we can play golf tennis human information <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I need. I need information on humans. <laughs> human, I do not understand. What is this language? Human, what are you saying? He's speaking in an alien language. We'll have to use our language unscrambler. Yo, that was great. I learned so much about humans. Now let's play some human golf. Dude, that sounds like the default Microsoft MIDI. I mean, well, what can I say about human golf? It's golf. But human, I guess. If they had coyote golf, I could probably relate, but nah. I think I milked all the good jokes out of this one already. Beyond Shadowgate. Yes, that Shadowgate. The one where you can die just by breathing. So the game basically has a bunch of puzzles you gotta solve in order to get anywhere, like lighting a fire to get the guard to come in and you punch him in the face. And this is a bucket. Dear God. I never figured out what that bucket does. But if I know Shadowgate, you use the bucket on a fish and you use the fish's sharp fin to carve out the shape of a key on the side of the bucket, then you use the key on a turtle's butt, but only on Saturday. Hey, there's a hole in the wall. Let's see what's in it. <laughs> yeah, this is Shadowgate, all right. Yo, dude, that is badass. That looks like an album cover for the band Grim Reaper. Now here's a chained up lady. What happens if I save her? Fair enough. I wish more women turn into furries. 
you're free to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you dropped your paddle ball. Hell is mine now. Dude, having a paddle ball was like having a Game Boy back then. Hey, yo, it's the Deer Avenger. Hey, man, you want a paddle ball? No? You want a bucket? I've got to be honest, I didn't get very far in this game. That's about as far as I got. I could have looked up a walkthrough, but then I got to thinking, this whole game is going to need a walkthrough. I know Shadowgate. I got to see the Reaper. I'm satisfied. Next. Okay, last game. And, oh, this one is a doozy. I could have made a video just about this game. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, it came from the desert. This is one of the weirdest games on the console, but it's got a pretty kick-ass theme song sang by the dev. When I started this show, I knew one day I was going to review this game. A little channel named Retsuprey did a riff on it a long time ago, and I thought it was one of the weirdest games I've ever seen. If you've never seen this game before, it has really primitive cutscenes with digitized people. Yeah, the Turbo Graphics was doing FMVs before the Sega CD. Ask Johnny Turbo. He used to wage war against the Sega CD. There's a lot to take in while playing this game, but basically this is what's going on. There's a colony of giant radioactive ants in this town in the middle of a desert and they're taking over the minds of the townspeople their goal is to set off a nuclear bomb that's being housed in this town and your goal is to kill the queen ant before they do that you normally have about eight in-game days before they will do that but the time limit may get shorter depending on how well you do at the mini games you have to do the most important mini game is a side scrolling level where you're shooting ants in order to get to the end of the level to begin with the queen's nest is protected by a force field so you can't face her yet Instead, and I never would have guessed this, you're supposed to just let an ant grab you when you get to the end, and that triggers the next events in the game to start getting rid of the force field. Don't you love it when games have cryptic shit that advances the game that's never explained? I guess you have to order TurboGrafx Power Magazine to get that information. They never kill for sport. That is solely the domain of Homo sapiens. Hey Doc, my old man hunts jackrabbits. I don't think he's a homo sapien. <laughs> Sounds like a gang of cats trying to kill each other. Man, I would hate to play this game high. This game has got some weird ass visuals sometimes. Later, at the foundry, the watchman, he is one of them. Oh, is he a little sussy? I can't fucking stand these people. This is your stepmother and your pussy whip daddy. So, Mr. Big Shot, riding around on your fancy cycle all day. Elroy, you tell this ungrateful lodger virus how it's gonna be from now on. Bud, you been going to school long enough, you ain't learning nothing, and we got no money for fancy college stuff. Stepmother and I decided that instead of you going back to school next week, that you're gonna start with me down at the site. There's no better job in this town, and now all that book stuff ain't gonna do you no good with the boys down at the plant. Oh, God, this hits too close to home, man. I quit school to work on tractors. I will say tractors are a lot easier than algebra. I hear you listening out there in your empty rooms, in your empty lives, getting sleepy while the pod under your bed grows and grows. Is this man about to hypnotize me? I'm fucking scared. When you meet your first possessed person, you meet the queen for the first time. Well, it's a lot to take in. We know all about you. You're on our list. Our death list. Not so fast, Buzz. It's time to play Exterminator. Are you any good at killing bugs? <laughs> hey, I know how to do that effect. It's called G Major. Your resistance only makes my penis longer. And here's the shooting minigame. You have to kill all the ants without running out of ammo or the person running out of life. What's funny is every time the ants hit them, they tear a piece of their body off. And if you let it go on long enough, they can become a freaking skeleton and still be alive. It's actually hilarious. The other minigame is this top-down thing where you're shooting a bunch of ants. When I was playing this game, I had no idea what this was about. In fact, you could skip it just by walking off the screen. And there doesn't seem to be any penalty for it? The creepiest person in this game is the sheriff. Oh my god, he's got this serial killer vibe. 
I'm glad you came down to see me, Buzz. Your father and I are very worried about you. You've displayed a certain anti-social behavior lately. I've been told to give you one more chance to join in with the community. Aren't you tired of being a loner? It beats being a bug, huh, Sheriff? <laughs> uh, all cops are bugs. They've taken over his mind. He's become an ant droid. That's the term we're going with? Okay. My main problem with this game is that it's so repetitive. Like, after you've seen the crazy cutscenes, after you've done every minigame, it just continues to do the same thing. You do the same minigames over and over, you see the same crazy cutscenes, it just gets old after a while, and then it kind of loses its charm. And then you're to the point of like, why am I still playing this? And you know why I'm playing this? To make a video. And this is the last time time I will ever touch it came from the desert again. And that's the TurboGrafx CD in a nutshell. Good games, bad games, weird games, it's a mixed bag. But in the end, it wasn't enough to keep the console afloat and the TurboGrafx CD would die in 1994. NEC would try one more time in Japan with the PCFX console that ran from 94 to 98 before getting out of the game console market completely. In the end, I believe the Turbo CD had a lot more to offer than the original console. You had great soundtracks, cutscenes with hilarious voice acting, more bold attempts at nicer looking games that push the system harder, and thanks to emulators like Mednafen, RetroArch, and BizHawk, we can experience these games for ourselves. As for me, I got hemorrhoids and I'm sitting on a pillow. The last thing on my mind is what my next episode is, but hopefully my ass will heal enough to come up with something. Until then, buy shirts and stickers from my store. Give me $5 on Patreon to see videos for anyone else. $1 to get your name on the board, and please, dear God, share this video around. The algorithm doesn't do shit for me. Tip of the day, uh, watch Bonkers. It's a good show. Bye. <laughs>